Global food giant Nestle says it has taken a major step to end child labor on cocoa farms supplying its factories. Critics ask why it has taken Nestle so long to act if it knew children were involved in its cocoa production. The director of Japan's damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant is stepped down due to illness. Speculation surrounding the possible connection between his medical condition and exposure to high radiation levels at the plant, is growing. France's Council of State, acting on a complaint from United States-based dubious agricultural company Monsanto, and other parties interested in the issue, annulled on Monday two agriculture ministry rulings, in 2007 and in 2008, suspending the planting of Monsanto 810 modified corn. Lawyers representing convicted assassin Sirhan Sirhan argue in newly filed court documents that a bullet was switched in evidence at his trial and new forensic details show he is innocent of the 1968 killing of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. A Stradivarius violin has been recreated using an X-ray scanner normally used to detect cancers and injuries, according to researchers. A key official in Peru's Environment Ministry resigned Monday over the government's handling of mounting protests against mining projects by highlands, folk, who fear for their water supplies. Restaurants around the globe will soon be utilizing genetic identification technology to ensure that certain seafood meals are genuine. The DNA barcoding technique was approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration FDA in October and is touted as a method of dealing with fraudulent fish products. It turns out that some restaurants may be serving you inferior seafood substitutes while still charging a premium price. Caviar and fish fillets could actually be comprised of lower quality alternatives without your knowledge. An ad for hair care products alleges certified hypoallergenic. There's no such thing, is there? And is it illegal to make the claim? In this question and answer article, Umra answers with, There is no such thing as certified hypoallergenic and in fact, there's barely such a thing as hypoallergenic. But it is not illegal to use the term, because there are also no standards governing its use. A spokesperson from the Food and Drug Administration, which regulates product labels, said that hypoallergenic means whatever a particular company wants it to mean. Marine biologists from the Sanibel Sea School as well as scientists from FGCU are saying Red Tide is back in full force. They're saying that's what's responsible for killing hundreds of mullet, Atlantic spearfish and angelfish in Estero Bay. Doublespeak, at its best. They say they have the supposed Ed War on Terror under control but also say they need to implement more control at home and abroad. The broadcast media's ignorance and unwillingness to cover the National Defense Authorization Act, a radical piece of legislation which outrageously redefines the U.S. homeland as a battlefield and makes U.S. citizens subject to military apprehension and detainment for life without access to a trial or attorney, is unacceptable. Pay special attention to Section 1031 of the bill. This bill violates the Posse Comitatus Act as it will allow federal military personnel to engage in domestic law enforcement. This is profoundly unconstitutional. More than 5,000 documents have been leaked online purporting to be the correspondence of climate scientists at the University of East Anglia who were previously accused of massaging evidence of man-made climate change. Following on from the original ClimateGate emails of 2009, the new package appears to show systematic suppression of evidence, and even publication of reports that scientists knew to, to be based on flawed approaches. Snake Arm, a twist on the robot concept by OC Robotics in Bristol, could prove to be of huge use to the defense and civil aviation industries and has already carried out safety checks in radioactive areas of nuclear power plants. It looks like something out of the Matrix. A new generation of PCs controlled by gestures is on its way, after Microsoft revealed it is specially adapting its Xbox Kinect technology for Windows computers. The system will allow Windows users to control software with the wave of a hand, as envisaged in the Steven Spielberg film Minority Report. Thanks to revolutionary new technology, 
we may now have to watch what we say, and what gestures we make towards the TV screen. For the Apple computer company is devising a new television, nicknamed the iTV, that not only hears your shouts and sees your gestures but can understand them too. Residents in Beckham County near Sayre say a massive sinkhole suddenly appeared overnight. They say it's so big a small house can fit inside it. Jack Damon cares for the property and says the hole formed just two days after Oklahoma's last earthquake about two weeks ago. Does it or does it not look perfectly round? Kind of spooky. You don't want to mess with it today, Damron said. Because whatever lies beneath the flat Oklahoma soil, isn't quite finished. Authorities in the South American nation said about 700 people live in the mainly farming communities on the slopes of the volcano in the Andes. Ecuador's Geophysical Institute said increased activity that began on Sunday is billowing columns of ash, sending superheated clouds of gas down the slopes and cascading hot rocks from the summit. The agency said that it is recording a gradual accumulation of lava in the mountain. The 16,480-foot volcano is in a sparsely populated area about 84 miles southeast of the capital, Quito. The Android developer who raised the ire of a mobile phone monitoring company last week is on the attack again, producing a video of how the carrier IQ software secretly installed on millions of mobile phones reports most everything a user does on a phone. Though the software is installed on most modern Android, BlackBerry and Nokia phones, Carrier IQ was virtually unknown until 25-year-old Trevor Eckhart of Connecticut analyzed its workings, revealing that the software secretly chronicles a user's phone experience. But now he's released a video actually showing the logging of text messages, encrypted web searches and, well, you name it. Apple is circulating a new statement to media outlets that states, we stopped supporting Carrier IQ, a piece of software that tracks user activity, with iOS 5 in most of our products, and we're going to remove it completely in a future software update. Android phones have gotten most of the attention in the Carrier IQ controversy, and the likes of AT&T, Sprint, HTC, and Samsung have confirmed using the tracking software on their mobile phones. It's a TNT and Sprint stress it is only being used to improve network performance. HTC and Samsung say they installed Carrier's application because Carrier's requested it. Other big companies are seeking to distance themselves from Carrier IQ. Along with Apple's statement, Nokia and Research in Motion denied Carrier IQ software is on their phones. Verizon Wireless tells GigaOM that it does not use Carrier IQ software, major British wireless carriers Vodafone, Orange and O2 also say they don't install the tracking software on their phones. Paramedics, emergency crews, teachers and even some employees from the Prime Minister's office took to the streets of Britain Wednesday for the country's largest strike in decades, drawing attention to government cuts but failing to bring the nation to a standstill. Magnitude 5 quake hits eastern Turkey Wednesday the 28th of November, causes panic and already devastated quake zone near Van. In the wake of a number of Mojave County residents testing positive for heavy metal toxicity, a group has formed on Facebook to pursue a class action lawsuit. Called Chemtrail Geoengineering Lawsuit, the approximately 300-member group is seeking more members who have tested positive for heavy metals in their blood and hair follicles and those who have had tests conducted on rainwater and soil samples. After a series of one-sided hearings, luxury goods maker Chanel has won recent court orders against hundreds of websites trafficking in counterfeit luxury goods. A federal judge in Nevada has agreed that Chanel can seize the domain names in question and transfer them all to U.S.-based registrar GoDaddy. The judge also ordered all internet search engines and all social media websites explicitly naming Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Bing, Yahoo, and Google, to de-index the domain names and to remove them from any search results.
the secret of X-37B robotic space plane set its own space endurance record on a hush-hush project operated by the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office. November 30th, the X-37B spacecraft marked its 270th day of flight, a lifetime in space that was heralded in the past as the vehicle's upper limit for space flight by project officials. The federal government has agreed to pay $2.5 million to the widow and children of the first person killed in the anthrax letter attacks of 2001, settling a lawsuit claiming that the Army did not adequately secure its supply of the deadly pathogen. Chalking it up to an error in record-keeping? We here at Get In It For Truth don't think so, not with something so dangerous and regimented. This was calculated. This attack was calculated by the same entities whom orchestrated the lie that has become 9-11. Oh, and here was hoping to have anthrax out of the headlines for good. It's the biggest medical scandal in U.S. history and it hasn't even happened yet. The feds are getting ready to test anthrax shots on kids, as a U.S. panel backs anthrax experiments on children. The only way to really tell for sure if the vaccine actually prevents anthrax is to deliberately expose the children to anthrax, including an unvaccinated control group. And if you think our government would never, ever do something like that well, you just don't know our government very well. McDonald's restaurants in San Francisco have found a way to comply with a city law that bans free toy giveaways with Happy Meals. Charge 10 cents for the toys. Economic force multipliers in effect here amidst other dangerous ploys? Hurricane Ophelia was the strongest storm of the season. But Hurricane Irene, not considered a major hurricane because it did not have winds exceeding 111 miles per hour when it made landfall in North Carolina on August 27th, Irene was one of the costliest storms in U.S. history, it is reported. Irene paralyzed the eastern seaboard and devastated parts of the northeast with deadly flooding. The notary who signed tens of thousands of false documents in a massive robo-signing scandal case was found dead in her home. A whistleblower dead under strange circumstances is this a daily occurrence for the elite attempting to keep control?